Hi, this is Colin from GameBricks.com, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create your own breakout game using GBoss. Now the first step in creating your game is to select the graphics you're going to use, and all of the graphics for this game should already be in your library images, so all we have to do is select them from that list on the left and add them to our game. There's a couple different graphics we need. First will be the brick, and we'll use that sort of as a boundary for our game. We'll also need a bubble, and this will be the sort of projectile that we're bouncing around. And we're going to have an undersea theme here, so we're using a seahorse for our paddle. And we'll also have a shell as sort of the object that we want to break with the bubble. Now we also want to add a background for our game, and that's the image that shows up behind all of the other objects. So let's find the sea background image, and click on the add background button this time. And you'll see that shows up on its own list there. The next step is to add the sound to our game, so let's click on the Import Sound tab, and we're just going to add the breaking sound effect. So I'll select it and click Add to Game. And the third step is to build the objects. So we're going to create uh, a different object for each element that you see in the game. And the first element we're going to create is the seahorse object, which will be sort of the paddle for our breakout game. So every object needs two things, that's a name and a graphic. So we'll call this one the seahorse object. Now it's important not to have any spaces in the object name. And for the graphic, obviously, we're just going to choose that seahorse. Alright, so we have our name and our graphic. Now, to actually make the seahorse do something in our game, we need to assign it some states and tasks. So we're, the first one we're going to use is the create state. So this will allow us to tell the seahorse to do something when it's first created or when it first appears on the screen. So once we have that state there, we're going to assign a task to it. So we're going to scroll down here and find the follow mouse task. We'll go ahead and click add. So when this seahorse object is created, it's going to start to follow the mouse. Alright, so that's the first step done. So we're going to click on the done button there. So now that we've created our seahorse object, we need to place it in our game. So let's go to the assemble game tab. We're just going to drag and drop this seahorse object from the list on the left out onto the screen there. And we're also going to add in our background. So we'll just click on the C background from the list on the bottom, and it'll show up behind all your other objects. So now we can test our game by clicking on the Test Game tab and clicking on the Generate Game button. And you can see here we have a seahorse, and if you move your mouse around, you can see that it will follow the cursor. So now that you've seen the process of creating one object, we can go ahead and jump back into Game Boss and get in a little more in-depth to finish up our game.